Hi, I'm Mike Myon, and today I have a special My Own Magic Review. Today we're going to look at the top magic tricks magicians are using to entertain kids 10 and under. I did not pick the top effects. The list is based on a survey of magicians in English-speaking countries around the world. This video is a two-part video, and this is part two, with half of the dozen tricks magicians like most for kids shows. You can see the other six in part one. Number six, the professor's nightmare. This is the first trick many of us learned. If you're not familiar with it, here's a quick look at Doug Kahn doing it in one of his terrific YouTube tutorials. Small piece of rope, one that's a little bit bigger. And note, this is just rope. If you were here, you could check it out. Everything's examinable. This is the long piece. And with the three different sizes, we shall create an illusion of similarity. An illusion of similarity. And no, it doesn't mean a lot in the days of technology, but I learned this crap, so I gotta show it to somebody. <clears throat> a two step, two step process. Step one, even the ends, even the ends at the top, all six ends. Step two, take the big loop, double that in half. Look what this does. It gives you the illusion of three loops the same size. Takes two ends to make one uh, loop. That's six ends to three loops. That should give us the perfect illusion of one, two, three ropes, the short rope and the medium rope and the long rope appearing to be all the same size. The Professor's Nightmare has all the same pluses as the cut and restored rope. It's small and easy to carry. It's puzzling for those who don't know the secret. And it can play big just by bringing a few kids on stage to hold the ropes. It's popular with those who do gospel magic. And since you don't cut the rope, you can use the same rope over and over, which makes it even possible to carry in your pocket while strolling. Number five, Hippity Hop Rabbits. You likely know this sucker trick where the kids believe you are trying to trick them by simply turning around the prop. There are many versions of this trick. There are big ones, small ones, pocket-sized versions. There are versions that are finely crafted and fairly expensive. And then there are cheaply made versions that are inexpensive. I love what Chance Wolf did with his version. Instead of rabbits, he has a magician and his assistant, and they trade places. Unfortunately, it's no longer being manufactured. I haven't included Hippity Hop Rabbits in my show for a long time, mostly because I can't come up with a way to make my presentation different from the way it is typically presented. Number four, Run Rabbit Run. This is another classic kid's trick that you are more than likely familiar with. It's one of those great kid pleasers where the kids see what's happening, but the magician does not. There are plenty of versions of Run Rabbit Run. Some you hold in your hand. Some have a base and need to sit on a table. Some have cats or ghosts or even pizzas instead of rabbits. Some have a mechanism which accelerates the speed with which the rabbit moves back and forth. The premise is pretty much the same in all versions. The rabbit goes in one door, travels across to the other door, the kids tell the magician, but by the time he looks, the rabbit has moved back to the other side of the prop. Until finally the rabbit is gone from both sides of the prop and, and he appears somewhere else entirely. While the survey asks for the best tricks for kids under 10, my experience with the trick is that it's only good for kids 6 and under. Number three, comedy wands. Any magician that does not do something funny with wands in his show is not performing for kids. There are so many types of funny magic wands. Wands that break, wands that bend, wands that form letters or make noise, some that make fire or grow, wands where the ends fall off, giant wands, mini wands, wands that are not wands at all. Tom Ogden, for example, uses a bathroom plunger which is pretty funny. A very popular comedy wand is the Silver Scepter. Singing, okay, I'll put it in there and I'll explain what's gonna happen. Because what's gonna happen is that magic wand is, did that move? Sorry, keep it there. That's gonna stay inside there. Now, now listen, listen, hey, stay in there. If it does that one more time, that get out of me. Here's a clip of me using a wand I made from a golf bag tube. 
come a little money, all right? So hold it with two hands, all right? There you go, good. Out of boy. Wands have practical value too for magicians. You can learn all about wands in the definitive book on the subject by Judge Gary Brown. I highly recommend you pick up a copy. You'll learn some tricks, some history, and how to make some very cool looking magic wands. Number two, the magic coloring book. I can't imagine using a coloring book for any group of kids older than five because by six, at least some kids in the audience will call out that wonderful phrase, I know that one. So I really take mine out of the drawer. Still, it's very popular and some performers modify the presentation instead of the pages turning from blank to outline to completely colored, they go backwards. Others combine it with appearing crayons or vanishing paint and make a unique presentation. There are a few different versions of the coloring book. The one I have is quite common, and I was able to get a matching book with all blank pages, which I've never used because a convincer is really not necessary for five-year-olds. I've also seen a few superhero magic coloring books, but they're pretty scarce. I'm in the process of making a coloring book from scratch. I'll make a how-to video for those interested in trying to make one themselves. Number one, sponge balls. I lumped sponge bunnies in with sponge balls because I think they're essentially the same. I'm not one bit surprised sponge balls tops the list. It gets a great reaction from every kid, even 40-year-old ones. There are hundreds of different sponge ball routines. Some where the magician just keeps producing balls from nowhere or his mouth and the balls just keep multiplying. Some routines have the balls changing shape. Others end with seemingly hundreds of sponge balls being produced at one time. Let the ball sit there. I'm going to hold on to this one. You hold on to this one, but squeeze tightly. Okay. Don't let that ball get over into my hand. Okay. Don't let my ball get over there into yours. Here comes the magic. <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> Did you feel anything? I think so. Is that this ball disappears? <laughs> it had to go somewhere, open and check. She has them both. <laughs> you don't have to clap, you're part of the act. I'll show you how it's done. I never use both of the balls. This one stays in my pocket. You put this one away, you only need this extra one over here and this one over there. Once you get rid of all the stupid little red balls, you're able to do the trick. That's the trick that's done with the little red balls, just like that. You put the ball down. Mm. Put the ball down. Mm. Blah! Thank you. I rarely use sponge balls in a parlor setting. I use them mostly for strolling. But now, because of COVID, they are on standby, ready to put back into action as soon as it's safe. Here's a tip to keep your sponge balls from getting flattened in your case. Cut the top and the bottom off of a water bottle and store your sponge balls in the top and bottomless bottle. It's just strong enough to keep the balls from getting flattened. Well, those are the top 12. But you might be interested to know the other tricks magicians say are some of the top tricks for kids shows.
If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do and hit the bell icon so YouTube will remind you when I post a new review. Please like and share the video and feel free to comment. I like to read what you say and I will likely respond, especially if you have a question. So thanks for watching and until next time, keep making magic.